Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion of Pong Jin and Wardoff and explore that a little deeper, get into the substantial and insubstantial aspects of that, and really get peel back some of the um, the alchemy that occurs in the in the ward off because it's uh, without that without the without the magic juju uh, it really is not not much of anything. So if we're doing like if I'm just using my arm and sticking it out there and just using my muscular strength, it's very easily to collapse that. And even if someone is big and strong and they're mm, they're overpowering someone with their with their muscles. It's still a different quality of, of energy. It's not that resilient strength that we're looking for. There's a there is a, a sense of resilience that is in the um, that is in the ward off. That's kind of like a, a a whippy kind of energy that that you don't get if you just have a lot of uh, mus muscle mass pushing it. But for for most of us, um, it it just doesn't work at all. And and. If you try really hard to make it work, then you end up with shoulder problems and things like that because it just we're not designed muscularly to make that happen. But when you connect the dots internally, then cool stuff starts to happen. And it also unlocks a lot of other treasures. So even if you can kind of fake it, and, and use your muscles and get by, you're going to miss out on all the cool stuff that happens down the road in when that Pong Jin is in, infused into uh, all the other different postures. And um, it's been stated, and I, I kind of agree with it, the idea that that Pong is the is like the primary, it's the first first one it's 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 the it's the elemental expression that uh, leads into all the other gins that's because you're going from zero and to into something and you're extending outward you're reaching out and so there's like there's a it's a young impulse is a reaching out from the center and 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 ex exploring if um if you're starting with zero, then there's no place to go in. You gotta, everything is 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 more. So the uh, the idea of, the, of pong is is not that it's it's soft and, and collapsible. It's it's soft and springy. It has a springy quality to it, so that you push in on it. It's like whoa! It 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 bounces you away, and. Um, so the being able to get into that, so you you need to be able to recruit your connective tissue system. So the, in the classics, they talk about you you use the sinews and not the muscles. And it's a, it's a fine distinction because the sinews, which are basically tendons or connective tissue, they are attached to muscles. So it's not it's not an either or. It's, it's just a point of focus. So the sinew is where the, the where the muscle attaches to the bone or the tendon where it attaches to the bone. And so you're focusing on that part rather than on the part of the muscle that gets short and contracts. And um, so there is a sense of elongation, of extension that occurs in all of Tai Chi, everything is a reaching outward rather than a, a bunching up. And um, you'll feel it particularly in the, in the shoulder, because that's the one that activates for most of us the first thing whenever, whenever there's stress. So if you just bring your arm out like that and you grab it with your, your other hand and, you, and you're pushing with your, with your arm out, but if you're using your muscle, you'll feel the tension in the shoulder. Just try that. It just you'll feel the tension in the shoulder, and that's because the muscles are contracting. They're they're pulling in, and when that happens, you can feel that it doesn't take very much to to collapse your own arm with that because it it just not there's just not enough there. 
So what we're looking for is something else that allows us to reverse that contractive impulse. So the motor neurons in your nervous system, the ones that, that tell, give instructions to the muscles to, to, to do something, the only thing they, the only message is they talk to the muscles is to, hey, muscles contract. And so if you are immediately go to the motor neurons, you immediately go to the do, then the your nervous system automatically goes to contraction. So you're going to, or you're going to tense up and that's going to cause that to, to um, you're going to, you're going to kink the hose. You're going to bunch up. So we need to do something to trick the nervous system into doing something that it doesn't like to do. We're going to go to Wu Wei go to the not do, go to that, that still point on the pendulum swing where for zero time, there's that turnaround on the pendulum and the energy of the system is at its maximum. And it before it begins to express, the energy expresses itself, there's that moment that of uh, where you gather and so the 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 trick that we're doing is we go to the wu wei and then to the wei wu wei the do doing based in non-doing so we start with the being and then we oh then we extend so it short circuits that impulse to immediately tense up and so if we just, you just practice that right here. And before you push with the arm, you, you just allow yourself to enter into that calm, relaxed state and relax your muscles. And then prior to pushing with your forearm, you reach out with your elbow. You reach with your index finger. So what you've done, you've by reaching out with your elbow, you've opened up the shoulder and you've given it the command to, hey, you're not going to contract now. You point the index finger and that establishes the coherence of the system. And then you feel with your wrist. You feel, you have your hand there and you feel that with your wrist. And notice that, oh, it got a lot stronger. You have that effortless power that comes with, with doing that. If you follow that sequence, if you short circuit that, you try to push before you move into the not do, into the Wu Wei, then you're gonna have the same predictable outcome that you've had forever. And if you, but if you want your ward off to have Pong Jin, then you, you feel reach with the elbow. So when I say reach with the elbow, I don't mean lift the elbow. I mean to actually extend it outward. So if I'm reaching out here, my elbow is going out that way, right? It's good. Or if I'm reaching toward you, you can see that the elbow comes in closer. So what it's doing is, it, opening up the shoulder joint. And this is something that you can do all day. This is something you can just practice all day, just reaching with your elbows. And every time you do that, you create a body, mind, spirit integration. Just by reaching with your elbows, you immediately create the sense of coherence of continuity, of energetic continuity throughout the whole system, just by doing that. And if you want to be a Buddha all day, just just reach with your elbows every chance you get, and and you are in the present moment. You're unflappable, and and life is good. But the 
what we're talking about here is how do we use that now? So going to that state of peace, that's nice, but how do we go from there to be able to do, how to execute, to actually make stuff happen, to impose our will on the world? So what the ward off is doing is just saying, oh yes, I am using my intention to create an effect on something other than me. And even if it just be empty space, if I'm meeting that empty space with my forearm, with my wrist and, and expanding into that, then there's automatically a, an energetic explosion that occurs in your body mind. There is an alchemy that occurs. And it's something that you can do it all day, all night. You can do it anytime you want. And the it creates a joyfulness because not only are you able to go to that peaceful place, body, mind, spirit integration, where you're just very present and aware, but there's also a sense of power and safety, security that comes with that. So you don't, you're not worried because you have this, this energetic continuity that, that is able to handle most situations that are going to arise in your, in your life. So the, uh, the substantial part, the stuff part is the structure. That is, we want to open the shoulder joint so that we're not going into that pre-programmed response, that one that goes all the way back, that's kind of locked in there, where we immediately tighten up and tense up in response to any impulse. So we want to, we want to turn that, that switch off, that, auto, that stress response, that automatic stress response at that pre-rational, pre-conscious level Turn that off. We do it by reaching with the elbow. So we open elbow gin, shoulder gin. We, oh, the gates, the elbow gate, the shoulder gate, they open and they allow us to access a whole bunch of other cool stuff. And then, but that says, okay, now, now what? Oh, we're gonna get coherent within the system. And the easy way is of course, to just reach with your index or feel your index finger. And then the other little part, which nobody ever talks about, but I'm going to talk about it, and that is the wrist. That you actually meet, you're reaching with the wrist. So when I reach out, I'm reaching with the wrist and then the fingers. If you, you can feel it, if you just reach out and reach out with the fingers, it's a different feeling than if you reach out with the wrist and then the fingers. So the this is something that is rarely talked about, but what happens is the wrist is, it's connected to the skeleton, the, the bones, the structure in a way that the fingers are not. The fingers are, are an, have an energetic continuity there, but the wrist has, this quality that that it leads the arms in a way that that it relaxes your muscles in a way that that if you're reaching with the fingers or not you especially try it say with a fist if you're punching out with a tight fist you can feel the resistance there you can feel you know the muscles pulling back on that so instead of reaching with the fingers, reaching in with the fist, reach out with your wrist, feel your wrist extending out and notice that there's no resistance. There's no resistance. So that arm is going out and your hands. So that's why in the Tai Chi, you know, we talk about a Tai Chi fist is very soft. It's very relaxed. Why? You're reaching with your wrist. And that way there is no resistance to the, to the outgoing, uh, extension so there's no that none of that 
muscular contraction pulling back in. So the um, being able to ward off by reaching the elbow and then feel the fingers so that there is that energetic coherence. And then you feel with the wrist. And so the that's the substantial part. The insubstantial part of this alchemy is follows a very basic pattern that um, is the key to understanding push hands. And that is you, first you get your three pillars in. And in our, our class, we, we shortcutted that to just say, boom, say, because you, you are expected to get the three pillars in now. So it should not take you more than, you know, three quarters of a second to be able to get your three pillars established. Whenever you're, whenever you've practiced that, you've gotten used to it. So getting that, so that becomes a, that's, that's just part of your vocabulary. So that boom. And then I used to say meat, but I, I changed that actually just in a conversation with Maria today, change that to feel. Because that will help you to meet at a physical level. So let's say I'm meeting the space. I'm going to feel my, the space with my wrist. And then the third part is fill. And this is the trickiest part because if you don't have enough gas in the tank, you're not going to really notice about filling. You have to be able to have enough juice. So that's why the three pillars, part of the three pillars is establishing connection with the earth and the sky in such a way as to plug into the big chi so that you're, you're pumping up. And so the fill part, so if you just you grab your wrist like that, so you feel you reach with your elbow, reach with the fingers, and it's kind of like putting a balloon inside a box and filling up the balloon so that it reaches the, the outside of the box and it can't expand anymore. So the structure doesn't expand anymore but it keeps filling up. So there's more and more pressure inside there. And so there it's, you're feeling that. So there's, there's a sense of, oh, you're expanding, 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 and, 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 and whatever it is you're pushing against is, is feeling your expansion. That expansion is what we refer to as pongjin. It's an up and out kind of expanding energy. And last week we did a, a little Qigong exercise to really get us into that. So we're going to, uh, we're not gonna do that one. You can refer to that in last week's tape if you like, but that's uh, this time we're going to, we're gonna really get to it from the three pillars so that you can start to feel that sense of filling and the fill that I'm talking about is where you, you're meeting something. It can be another person. It can be your own, your own the hand, resistance of your own hand, or it can just be the empty space. You're pushing against that empty space, not changing the physicality at all, but pumping up the energy so that you have this expansive energy building up within the system. So at that point, then you have that springiness. Then it's like the springiness comes, it's like someone pushing against a, uh, an inner tube, you know, or a, uh, a big balloon or something. There's a, there's a bouncy quality to it. And it comes from having that animating your structure, particularly, particularly your connective tissue system. So before we get up and do this, any questions on what we're talking about here, and then we'll get we'll um, we'll get up there. Scott, um, 
I actually thought I knew this answer to this question, but I'm not sure now. Um, when you're reaching with your elbow, are you is your elbow actually moving in space, or is it more of a energetic? Um, mine actually moves in space. Okay. Doesn't have to, but it, it you know, I it it it's good to feel that because what what that does is it it's like uh, it establishes the tensegrity of the connective sy tissue system. So if you can try it without without doing that. Uh, but you're giving your, just like if you, if I reach out my arm like that, right, and extend, I can feel the pull on my connective tissue, okay? And that tells, that tells my body, oh, tensegrity. And that is a message that goes throughout the whole system. It's like, um, uh, like a guitar string. If the guitar string is 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 really um, uh, uh, limp, you know you're getting no sound out of it. You know, and you ding 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 ding. You know, and uh, you get uh, you get it has more tensegrity in the system. So by reaching with that elbow and opening the shoulder, you get more tensegrity into the system. And that allows for the energy to travel much faster. You had something? I was going to say, you're not reaching far with your elbow. It moves the space just a little bit. Yeah, she said it's not far, and that's that's true. But it it can also be you know, noticeable. You know, it's 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 not not nothing. It's uh, you know, there's a, there's a you know, if I'm if I'm like this and I'm extending out, there's a there's a yeah, there, there, there's a reach there that can, it can be substantial. Okay, Valerie. Would that be the same, um, like just having your, your hand here and pointing with the index finger, that brings in the tensegrity. So is that the yeah. same idea? Same idea. Okay. One way to practice this is to put your hand on your chest like this, and and just reach down with your elbow so you can feel it opening the shoulder joint you just reach down keep your arm against the body because you don't want to you don't want to lift it you're reaching down so you're getting the feel of what that feels like to create space in the in the shoulder joint just reach down with that and then once you get the hang of that then you can reach out with with it and you get the same idea right so there's there's a lengthening of the tissue in your in your arm, and it lengthens. It 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 creates more uh, uh, a tautness there in the connective tissue, which allows the energy to move more freely. Hi, Diane. Good to see you, Jonathan. You had something? Yeah, I uh, let me unmute. Oh, you put you muted yourself. Muted. Okay. Yeah. You can hear me, right? I can hear you. Yes. It seems like, you know, just like I, I know this is, I brought this up for a while back with you a decade ago about a hug is initiated with the fingers. But to continue on that theme, it does seem like a hug goes from the fingers to just what you're saying, the wrist and, and the elbows extending. Nobody hugs like this. You know, we, we, we actually kind of do that. It's a very loving kind of good feel good. That, that, that's a good image. That's yeah. a good image. Yes. So you're you're oh you're you're reaching out. Right. And the elbows and the wrists are yeah. all doing what you're saying. You yeah, know, that's kind of cool. It's actually actually the, the preparation for the hug, the hug actually itself. Right. No, it's more of a right. contraction. So it's exactly. preparation for the hug. So that's yeah. why my piece where I reference you is called distance hugging. But yes, exactly that. Yeah, cool. Good. Good. Okay, anybody else? Nick. Yeah. So I'm just trying to reconcile the notion of tension, tautness, the tighter guitar string and what you're talking about with uh, the, trying to isolate or separate somehow clearly defined for myself the difference between the kind of tension that actually blocks things up 
I mean, if you yeah. if you make the system more taught, uh, that equates in my mind and and in my subjective experience of things actually closing down and circulation stopping. So, um, what am I misunderstanding? Um, you you've tested this out. Yeah, your, I mean, your I observations still... your observations are, are are directly the opposite of mine. So I'm I'm uh, I'm wondering uh, we're we're might be using different language for the same for for uh, for for things. Yeah, that's what I'm because what I think of as engaged the eng engaging the connective tissue system is it's kind of it's activating it but it's not it's not making it taut it's not making it tense okay well we get muscular tension and tautness are two different things okay okay so muscular tension is is the agonist muscles are fighting the antagonist muscles Right. Whereas in extension, there is no there's no conflict. Everybody's moving in the same direction. So there is a lengthening, but it's uh, okay. but there's no there's no pull back. So that's okay. that's that's why the difference say between reaching out with a, a tense fist and reaching out, and you can feel, you know, as you're reaching, you can feel the pullback. Whereas if you're reaching out with your wrist. You don't feel that pullback, so I think that that's the the language distinction that that I make there. Valerie, you have something? Yes, um, I understand what Nick is saying, um, but I more thoroughly understand what you're saying. I have this funky thing going on with my shoulder, and sometimes if I think I'm reaching with my elbow, okay. Um, I can tell that I'm not because the tendon up in here gets all, it's painful, just flat out, it's painful. But if I reach with the elbow and let go of that tension, okay, I feel a tautness in my arm. I feel that, I feel the fullness of it and there is no funkiness in my shoulder. So then I know I've reached what, my goal is, which is reaching with the shoulder with no tension, and there's fullness. And to me, I equate that fullness with that tautness. Right. So um, I, I can see how tension and tautness can get kind of weird. But I under to me, I equate the tautness with fullness versus tautness and tension. Tension being no bueno in the shoulder tautness that fullness good in the shoulder <laughs> keith speaking of shoulders uh, you know yeah, excuse me you know that was a pretty good analogy with the guitar strings and you know being you know and all i know is the way that this makes me feel because i still have so so much to learn only starting but when we were in sedona there's a combination when you're in when you're in there you know, there's a combination of tension and agility and freedom of movement. And I'm not sure what that feeling is, but yeah, I feel the tension, but it's so tight, but at the same time have the agility to play, you know, there's something there. So they're kind of the same kind of, they kind of go together. And I don't even know what I'm saying. That probably makes no sense to anybody, but, and the reaching down with your elbow feels swell on my, Newly repaired wing, by the way. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Very just practice that and just get the feeling of that. So you have that awareness of because it doesn't have to be much, you know, it just, oh, the intention to do that creates that opening, opens the shoulder joint, the shoulder gate, reach with the elbow gate. And oh, that we have, we got, we got a party. We got a party. And that is where the, that's where the power comes from because then the energy is moving along these, this, this highway. And 
of, of connective tissue. And, and there's an expression of it. Whereas any muscular contraction, localized muscular contraction will shorten that, will interrupt that, that, that flow. Roadblocks on the highway. Cool. All right, let's do let's do some fun stuff here. Okay. Just about. So first thing you want to do, always, 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 is boom. That is. Put in your three pillars. What are your three pillars? Energetic coherence, central equilibrium, and unkink the hose. So first thing we're gonna do is feel the balls of the feet. Knees are unlocked. So we're just by feeling with the balls of the feet, we open up the young Chuan points in the balls of the feet and in, in the in the feet, the kidney one point, the bubbling well. And this allows us to access the yin chi of the earth. So there's a, a, a conversation going on there and that is you're having energy from your body mind is exiting through the bubbling well. You're grounding that. At the same time, the yin chi from the earth is bubbling up through the kidney one points and filling your body mind with the yin chi. And then we're going to do the other half of the equation there, which is establish the yang chi connection, which is reached with the crown of the head. Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. So what's happening here is kind of analogous to lightning. So lightning is generated whenever the electrical charge in the ionosphere becomes sufficiently uh, cranked up that it exchanges with the yin chi of the earth. And it becomes this exchange between the ionosphere and, and the earth. And this is happening somewhere in the earth, approximately 7.83 times a second. And it's called the Schumann resonance. So it's, 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 I, lightning is beating the atmosphere like a drum on the average about 7.83. At least that's what the number used to be. I don't know if it's still that way. So, and lightning, the visible part of lightning is the is coming up from the earth. The energy is, is the insubstantial part is coming down from the heavens. The substantial part is coming up from the earth. The part we see, it looks like the optical illusion is that it's coming down, but it's actually happening both directions and the visible part is coming up. And so that's what's happening here with your central equilibrium, your Zhong Ding. You're filling with lightning. So you're, every time you do this, you're renewing your resources. So instead of expending your own chi, and depleting your kidney chi, you're 
at the very least not depleting. And if you're doing it right, you may even be filling up. You may be turning back the depletion. Hoping the jade pillow gate is one of those kinks in the hose. The jade pillow gate is where we, if the chin is raised and we bunching up at the base of the skull, then there's a, a blockage by reaching with the crown, tucking into the chin and lengthening the neck, we unkink the hose. So we're feeling the balls of the feet, reaching with the crown of the head, opening the jade pillow gate. Relax the lower back and allow your sacrum and your coccyx to drop, flattening out your lower back somewhat. So the you're flattening out that lordosis, the, the curve in the lower back. It's not a position you want to hold all the time. You want to be able to move in and out of that. But you also want to be able to feel that, that connection where you're holding the point on the coccyx, the way Luke, holding that in opposition to the crown of the head. When you do that, you're opening space between the vertebrae. And you're allowing energy to move more freely along the, um, the penetrating vessel, which connects the, um, the hui yin at the, at the, between the legs and the by Hui at the top of the head. It also extends from there down the yin channels into the balls of the feet. So you're making this, this connection. So you're filling up. Reach with the clavicular notch. So you're opening the chest and opening the shoulders. Point your index fingers, feel those and establish your energetic coherence. So you're reaching down with the fingers. Reaching with the elbows. So here's another point that we're, another kink in the hose we're, we're unblocking that is in the shoulders. Just by reaching, rounding the arms. Notice that the palms of my hands are pointing backward. The, the backs of my hands are, are reaching forward. You're feeling the fingers, reaching with the elbows, reaching with the crown. And then you want to unkink the qua. So just boom, boom, you're spiraling down, turning, and just unlocking hip tension. So you're getting sung qua, you're sinking into that. As you reach with the elbows, reach with the fingers, and then reach with the wrists, but don't move them. So as if you're reaching forward with the wrists, but you're not gonna move them. You're just gonna feel them pushing, feeling the, uh, the space in front of them. You can think of it as pushing the air, you can also think about it as pushing the space. Feel that, feel your wrists. And as you do that, notice the activity in your hands, in your arms. This is the filling. So we're using a simple three pillars standing posture to generate that sense of fullness. So we have boom, 
or three pillars and we meet or feel and we fill. Now just do a very simple, like an opening posture, or an opening movement in a, in a yawn form where you, you feel your elbows, reach with your elbows and feel the, the shoulders disengage as you do that by intentionally doing that. And then reach with your wrists and coming up with the wrists, letting your fingers hang, moving very, very slowly. Feel the space, feel your wrists, feeling the space. Feel the resistance there, feel the heaviness of your arm as you do this. Feel the heaviness of your fingers. Feel the fullness as you're very soon. And then reach out with your fingers. And as you do that, feel the space between your shoulder blades opening up. Feel that tautness there as you extend out. You're lengthening the tissue between your shoulder blades. Now feel the balls of your feet, set the knees and bow from the quad slightly. And as you do that, reach with the elbows. Elbows start to come down. Yes, bowing forward slightly. Feel your wrists now. Feel them pressing against the empty space and bend the wrists as they come down so the fingers are reaching up. Reaching with the wrists. So you get down and then straighten up. And as you do that, you reach down with the fingers. Feel the fullness in your hands. Feel the fullness in your, your entire body mind. Do that again, feel the balls of the feet, set the knees, bow forward slightly. And as you bow forward, you reach with the elbows, open the shoulders, open the shoulder gate, open the elbow gate and reach with the wrists, relax the fingers. Feel that up and out energy, that expansion. Reach with the fingers, open between the shoulder blades. Reaching, feel the balls, set the knees, bow forward, reach with the elbows. Feel the wrists as if you're swimming through the air. Straighten up and reach down to the fingers. Feel the fullness. Now, sink into your left, spiral down, turn, pivot on your right heel. To the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. We're gonna do a little pong now, a little ward off, very simplified. There are probably a thousand different ways to do a ward off posture. So this is just one of them, but we're gonna break it down. It's, it's really, it's most, the simplest components. That is, we're going to go like this. Actually, we're gonna use a, Bring the, the left hand up so it'll be like more of a classic ward off with the with the right arm kind of a thing. So bring the hand down. So feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the left. And as you spiral down to the left, reach with the elbows. You're loading up that right leg, spiraling down to the left, reaching with the elbows, opening the shoulder joints. Feel your index fingers. Feel the fullness in your hands. A 
and then turn. And as you turn, you set the right elbow, set the left elbow, and reach with the wrist. So as you're reaching up, notice the hand is down and as it's coming up, it's rotating. So this is a key part of it. So the wrist is reaching and turning. The fingers are relaxed. Reach with both elbows, both wrists. And complete the turn and bring your left hand so that it's just facing the, the palms of both hands are facing each other. Reaching with the elbows, reaching with the wrists. Not forgetting the three pillars. So everything is coming from that. Reaching with the crown of the head, feeling the balls of the feet. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, and then turn, open up and come down. Spiral, left ball, knee cross, spiral down. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. And then turn. As you turn, feel the elbows. Feel the wrists. Feel that and fill. Allow that feeling to energize the whole system. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and then turn, hands come down. Come up, right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, reach with the elbows. As you turn, feel the wrist, reach with the wrist. Feel that, feel it pressing against the space. So the substantial part of this is this thing here, where you setting the elbow, reach with the wrist. So you're doing this in, you're actually you're setting the elbow, reaching with the finger. So you're feeling the energetic coherence and then you, reach with the wrist. So there's this, this quality is happening, which then allows the tensegrity of the whole system. So you're not just pushing with your press or um, warding off with your forearm or your wrist, you're doing it with the earth. Everything is connected up and moving through that. One more time. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and then turn. You're reaching with the, with the elbows, feeling your index fingers, the energetic coherence and feel with the wrists, fill. Rotate the forearm so the palm is out and feel the, the, the fullness, feel the energy filling up the whole structure there, the Pong Jin which is animates the structure. Without that tensegrity, without that springy, springy connective tissue, you don't have anything. Without the energy, you don't have anything. It's the two together that make that thing work. Bring your arms down, pivot, step in, take a deep breath, and here are the chi. Well, grab a seat, please. We got a few minutes there. See if anybody has any questions. Hey, Keith. That was a really good movement. I know I'm not only getting half of it, not being able to complete it, not being able to use my left side, but 
you know, for what I could get out of it, that felt really good. I could feel the tension. I could feel the, you know, could feel the energy, the agility and the tension. You know, there's a bit missing over on this side, but I was, I caught a taste anyway. Great. Good. Thank you. Rick, I have, I have a question. Yes. In the, in the ward off with the right hand, I can feel that I'm reaching forward with my wrist. But with the other hand, are we going that way toward our other hand or are we reaching up? I don't know where this one needs to reach. Oh, okay. So the, uh, the left elbow is going that way. Right. Going down and, and the left wrist is kind of extending. Oh, uh, that's a good question. What is that doing? It, uh, it's, it's more of a ground. It's a negative pole in that system. Oh. Okay. So it, you're, you're, you, you established the tensegrity of the structure, but it's, it's kind of creating a, a still point from which this can, the yang chi of the, of the, of the right arm can, can work. That's what it feels like to me anyway. Okay, I can imagine that. I can feel the polarity between them when I think of it that way. Great, good. I think, okay. I think that, that, that's what it feels like to me. Jonathan, you had, you had a thought? Yeah, I, it was what we were talking earlier. You and I were talking about filling half the balloon, you know, when you were doing that exercise without one of the arms, which is instructive in its own way. But it does raise that question of when the other arm comes in. And if this is yang, then this other hand in some ways does become yin, like you're saying, like yes. you stroke the sparrow's tail, when you can right. feel activating the yin energy totally informs the yang. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you're getting that that quality there. So this becomes, you know, it's mm, it's uh, doing a little dance with the uh, with the with the, with the right arm. Maybe support might be the right word. Support or I like I like ground kind of keep with that uh, keep with the lightning idea there. So it's yeah. it's sort of it it provides the uh, you know was it the the cathode to the anode. Mm -hmm. So it uh, it I think that uh, there's you got a, a negative terminal to go with the uh, with the pos positive. It also feels a little bit like it could be an assist, like it's kind of helping move that direction. I don't think you want that. Okay, because then I you get you uprooted. Want, I, yeah. th I think you want, you want it kind of almost pulling apart, okay. you know, because okay. it uh, the, the two together, I, I you know, you I, I don't go think off. you're going to get the, yeah. I don't think you're going to get the same energetic flow that you will that way you know whenever we get into the press then we we start we, we're it's a different energy then we're bringing both of them into a uh, you know a uh, um uh, a cooperative uh a constructive interference uh, whenever we do that okay scott it feels to me that the when you reach with the left, it's completing it's completing the circuit, completing like a circle, right? That's right. the way it feels to me. Is like until I until you reach with the left, you don't really have it because you've only got half a circle. Right. A circle. I think what Jonathan was saying there. He said so you want to get that you want to get those two those two terminals if you want to make it you want to get the whole uh, the whole uh, yeah get 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 the full money out of that. Right. Got to have polarity. Yep. Yeah. Definitely the circle part. I mean, it definitely create, create completes a circle. That's how it feels to me, right? Yeah. You know, from that, the, I think we do, we do, that do, we do with the open up between the shoulder blades there. Right, right. You know, it, it allows for that, that right. there's a completion there. If you, if you don't open up the shoulder blades there, everything is relaxed and it's limp, then you got nothing, right? It's like, mm, you, need, you need that uh, expansion. So that's the substantial expansion that goes with the with the insubstantial filling of the energy. This was very cool, by the way. Thank you. Good. Cool. Anybody else? Okay. Well, um, thank you all so much. This is great. Oh, bye bye. Thank, thank you. Maria.
Thank you. Thank Good you, morning. Bye-bye. Good night.